block. You could go direct entry into Aaliyah Boston, but you want her involved either on a catch or setting the screen. Well, the crowd will do their part to make it tough on South Carolina. Sell out here at Maples as the teams head back onto the court with 12.5 to go. South Carolina's out of timeout, so they have to get it in. They find Boston, defended by Prechtel. Backs her in, spins, the double comes from Brink, knocked out of bounds with six seconds to go. It is still South Carolina ball. Direct entry into Aaliyah Boston. It's what we expected, and then she went to work. But how about Prechtel and Brink? They have given Boston trouble all game long with their length. Don Staley out of timeouts. Cook will trigger the inbound. Look for a lob over the top to Cardoso or Boston here. Cardoso just checked into the game. That's where they look. They find Boston. Boston, an open look. Gets it to go. 2.1 to go. Tie game here at Stanford. And how about Aaliyah Boston hitting the huge shot, remember, a couple of years ago against Stanford in the semifinal of the Final Four. We remember that. And then here, smiles as she hits a really tough shot over two long defenders to tie up this ball game. This time, it rolled in for Aaliyah Boston. She's got the double-double into double figures now. 63rd double-double of her remarkable career. So Stanford calls the timeout. They've got time, plenty of time, to get something done here with 2.1 to go. You have time for catch, one dribble and a shot. You have time for catch, a quick pass and a shot. Again, maybe direct entry inside to one of their bigs. Can and jump. Ashton Prechtel, both players who have quick releases on their shot. And range out to three. So Stanford will inbound the ball opposite their bench instead of in front of their bench. Jones will put it into play. Looks for the lob to Brink, bat it away, and we will go to overtime here at Stanford. Block to block screen, trying to get Cameron Brink the ball. The pass was just too low. Aaliyah Boston scores in the final seconds to force OT here at Stanford. Number one, South Carolina without any more timeouts. So you, you have to inbound the ball cleanly. Stanford is going to be looking to get a steal or a deflection. They've got a little bit of time to try to trap before they foul. Trampoli beat on for Stanford. Here's Cook. She's trapped. Saxton got a cross out court in time. And now Belibi gives the foul to Victoria Saxton. Saxton entered the game 9 of 10 from the free throw line this season. These will be our first free throw attempts tonight. And anytime South Carolina is shooting a free throw, your number one objective is to box out on the free throw line because they can get offensive boards there. With that in mind, Stanford will bring Prechtel in. So she and Erie often on the floor. Here's Haley Jones back into the game. Saxton at the line to shoot a couple. Stanford with a timeout so they can advance the basketball if they choose. Great job by Ami here, who hopped up, kept it alive in the possession arrow, pointing to South Carolina. Letitia, Ami here on the glass. We've seen it over and over again the last couple of years. On the free throw line, often it's Aliyah Boston. This time it's Ami here. Potentially saving this game by getting an offensive board on your own team's free throw. Incredible. Remember we talked about how the advantage was for Stanford on the offensive glass after that rebound advantage. 
to South Carolina. They're plus one in offensive rebounds. Now they're 14th, and it comes at a critical time. That's tapped out of bounds. 21.4 to go in overtime. That's a tough place to inbound from that deep baseline corner. Ball finds Cook. What a foul. Instead, they go for the steal. Timeout called by Stanford. You have to wonder why wasn't Stanford fouling, but they had a steal up their sleeves, apparently. I am stunned that they did not foul right away. The, the message had to have been, maybe go for a steal the first two seconds, but then you have to foul. Wisdom. The help coming over and it. Great job knocking it out of the big's hands. But when you South Carolina players have to be expecting the foul to come as well. Stanford uses their final timeout. Carolina out of timeouts. Because of the misses, this is similar to what we saw at the end of regulation. The door is open for Stanford to go for two to tie it. They yes. don't need the three. Yes. Look for Haley Jones potentially to get it back after she inbounds the ball. She's got to get it in, though. They're out of timeouts. And a five-second call. Turnover, Stanford. Stanford defensively, and then presumably foul. There was still a little discussion as to what the call was, and now Stanford realizing, and Haley Jones to the bench after the turnover. They'll make substitutions, and they have to look for the quick foul here. They Ten seconds to. to go. South Carolina out of timeouts. Got a foul. They don't. Feel across half court, and there finally is the foul with 5.6 to go. Especially because Stanford's out of timeouts so and you can't advance the ball. The clock, but the I, clock is important. You have to foul right away. I will say this. I think Zaya Cook and Dawn Staley, they believed that Zaya Cook was fouled. It just wasn't called because they wanted to get in the hands of one of their best shooters. Well, Cook was 11 to 14 for the free throw. You can't line. leave any question defensive. Correct. you got to foul so that the officials blow the whistle. Credit, credit. South Carolina, though, for taking the time off the clock. It's a 4.4 off. So here is free throw at the free throw line. So what I need to say is the number one thing for Stanford here. Box out. Box out, and then you gotta go. You can go full court tripling in, in this amount of time. No timeouts left. Gary Offit has it, and she called a timeout, but they're out of timeouts. They're out of timeouts. The timeout was awarded. To Stanford, but they were out of timeouts. Erie often called it. That's a miss. When Stanford was in their huddle before the free throw, the players, when the players are huddling together, you've got to say, we don't have timeouts, we just got to get it and go. Right here, you see her get it and calls a timeout. As a player, I mean, I know she's a young player, but that's where it is. So that's a technical. Yeah, your, your upperclassmen have to communicate that to you. It's a technical foul. So South Carolina will go to the free throw line with 3.1 to go. Because Stanford was out of timeouts. They called a timeout. The officials stopped the clock to award them the timeout. But like Rebecca just said, that's something that's talked about in the huddle before you go out. No timeouts is yelled over and over again. Here's the big one from Cook. It's a three-point game right now. Zion Cook comes through in the clutch for number one, South Carolina. Oh, free throws and the basketball. After the technical, it's South Carolina basketball. And 
finally the foul given with one second to go and number one South Carolina is going to hold on and Dawn Staley's team will knock off another ranked opponent that will be 16 wins in a row against ranked teams it's a work in progress in November certainly and that's what Stanford has to be thinking there are things to work on things to discuss things to learn from this loss yes and the experience of South Carolina in these moments shown through absolutely Zaya Cook held in check in the first half comes through at the end and in the end it's a familiar story number one South Carolina knocks off number two Stanford the Gamecocks win it in overtime 76 to 71